we are on a set of Saints and Soldiers The Void with arguably the star of the film, 76mm gun motor carriage M18, affectionately known as the Hellcat. This nicely restored M18 is one of two that they incorporate in the movie. Uh, the two uh, tank destroyers are called Annie and Avenging Angel. This one is Annie, it's an early production model. Avenging Angel was a later production. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but just to give you a rough overview, one, this is not a tank. The M18 isn't a tank, it's a tank destroyer. The most significant thing is it has no armor whatsoever. That's, a, that's about it. It's uh, maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, just enough to stop fragmentation, bullets and so on. Its job was to seek out, strike at enemy armor and destroy it. The central feature of the M18 is the 76 millimeter cannon. The power of the gun is such that when it fires, the entire vehicle will rock back significantly, far more so than you would have on a tank. Quite capable of punching through a Tiger at any combat range. Panthers, it had a significant problem with. It generally either had to get very close, use special high velocity armor piercing ammunition, which is very rare, or just go around the side. Fortunately, if you've got a vehicle that'll do 50 miles an hour, getting around the side is actually a feasible option. They're, they can be zippy. It's surprisingly um, fast and agile. We were really getting up and going on some of these scenes. I was kind of taken back by the speed and the power. This was the fastest tracked vehicle in World War II and was capable, in theory, of breaking 50 miles an hour. This one's getting a little on in years. They don't really want to do it over about 35. But even that is quite a significant turn of speed when you're in it, or better yet, if you're looking at it trundling down the road at you. It came up the road towards us. and. When those things fire up, they're so loud. One of my cues, I was supposed to, to turn around and look up at it as it came up the road mm -hmm. um, at a certain moment, and I, I couldn't hear my cue because those things are so, so loud. loud. Yeah. Okay, so it started snowing. So I've uh, borrowed some of the equipment from wardrobe, and I mean, it's not bad. It's not reasonably heavy coat. Wouldn't want to run on it, but it works. M18, of course, has no roof, designed to allow the crew visibility out. But fortunately for filming, it also allows room for all the equipment, the lighting and so on. So uh, they're shooting a couple of interior scenes right now. Manual trigger. So if your foot pedal doesn't work, you pull, you pull this lever. So it's on the way. Bang. Gunner shot, tank. Ready, clear. Fire. On the way. This is the office of Annie, where the crew would work and play. Um, Sitting in the TC's uh, spot, uh, he's got a ring mount 50 cal. To my direct front would be where the gunner is. And on the right hand side, the loader. Uh, you'll notice left handed loading, which is a little bit unusual for an American vehicle. He's got all of uh, five rounds available to him. And anything else he's got to drag out from the bottom of the, uh, the vehicle under the floor. The loader doesn't have a platform to stand on, so he's got to shuffle around as the uh, turret turns. Up front where the gunner sits, we've got two optics. We've got the primary periscope optic, and then we have a direct vision down low and to the right. You can shoot off of either one. They each have their advantages or disadvantages. He's got a manual traverse, power traverse, manual elevation, a foot pedal, and a very large lever for a manual trigger. The foot pedal, of course, being an, al uh, an alternate form of trigger. Azimuth indicator. Tank destroyers also had a secondary role as artillery. So they would hide behind the uh, terrain feature, a hill or whatever, and shoot indirect just by using mathematics and grids. So the azimuth indicator will be used for that function. Helping it out is an elevation quadrant. The elevation quadrant does exactly the same thing for elevation as the azimuth indicator does for the turret traverse. Further down and forward, you're going to have the driver on the left and the assistant driver on the right. Uh, obviously, of course, the vehicle just standing here won't give you the impression of what it is capable of. To actually see it moving around and shooting, watch the movie. So we're sitting on the cannon, you know, riding the up. <laughs> like, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey guys, we should probably get a, you know, a lesson here. Bill play a video game. Yeah, I've seen this before. I've done it in this yeah. It's one game in particular. Play World of Tanks? I played it enough to know that it would be way too fun. I just got super addictive. Dot com. Dot com.